Good morning, tubers. Matt and Roy back with you once again. Back on the 30th of April, 2018. A very beautiful day here in Southern Virginia. 60 degrees, and it's going to get up to about 71 today, so definitely going to be another walking day today. Um, by now, you guys have probably seen my vlog from uh, Saturday, the garage shell finds and the vintage elevator. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't usually get a chance to film uh, old school elevators, especially gated ones like that with the dual doors. I really wish I would have been able to uh, get a trip going up, but unfortunately there were just too many people in need of it. it was uh, There was a, a rummage sale at that church and people were constantly going up and down in that elevator to get to the second floor, which was where the fellowship hall and the actual rummage sale was taking place. But nevertheless, that was still a very interesting elevator to film. Everybody's asking me, Matt, why did you disable comments on that video? Well, if you noticed in the beginning for the first segment, the audio was out of sync. The last time I had put up a video like that, a bunch of hecklers on there, they were like, you know, your audio's out of sync. You know, make sure you don't, you, you make sure your audio is in sync next time. You know, your audio is out of sync. And I just didn't want to hear it. And I would appreciate it. Whoever does try to comment by other means, just um, don't worry about it. I knew, I know the audio was out of sync. That is because I'm using my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. I'm still waiting on the case for my new Galaxy S9 Plus. So it shouldn't be an issue for much longer. I think it has to do with the phone just getting older and it really needs to be restored. So that's what happened there. But anyway, I am heading to the uh, thrift store. I had to go to the local city, city treasurer's office this morning and pay my personal property tax. It's on my van. It's kind of like a, um, a luxury tax in Virginia. You actually have to pay for whatever the assessed value of your vehicle is worth. And it wasn't too bad in my case. And it would be a lot more because, um, you know, now I have this versus the town car. It's actually a percentage of that. I think it's something like 5 or 10% of its value. I, I don't remember exactly. But what's nice is over the past few years, they've actually had a tax relief credit. And in my case, it was like 48%. So it definitely helps. Uh, for those of you that don't have a luxury tax or a personal property tax, consider yourself blessed because it really adds up over the years. And, you know, when you're paying for a vehicle, you know, each month and then you got to pay once a year this personal property tax and all the other taxes in your life it really adds up believe me but you know what there's only two things that are assured in life and that's death and taxes so Benjamin Franklin actually said that yeah gentleman that I studied very very uh, thoroughly when I was in school but I'm almost at the thrift store I'm gonna go and pause this vlog we will see what the rest they brings and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, back at home. Just finished loading a whole bunch of scrap computers into my dad's pickup truck because we're going to be taking them over to a buddy of mine that does scrap uh, metal recycling. And something I've been needing to do for a while. For the longest time, I had the computers piled up over here by the garbage cans and. Uh, I'm sure the neighbors didn't like that. About 15 different towers. So let me show you what we've been busy doing. I'm gonna turn you right around. Talk to you guys right, in tubers. just a moment. So dad just helped me load all these computers in the truck here. Actually, we did a few things here. First thing we needed to do was put this gate on. This is so the fifth wheel trailer can connect properly to its uh, fifth wheel hitch in the middle of the truck here. And um, we weren't sure at first if this gate was going to fit because what had happened, this came off the uh, F-250. And we weren't sure if it was going to make it. It almost didn't. There is a little seal down here. I don't know if I can get it on film, but there's a little tiny um, seal that goes around the hole where this gate actually fits in. And we had to take that rubber seal off. And even with that off, we had to take a pry bar, a crowbar, and we had to pry it in to get it on this side. But luckily, the gate actually went on just fine. 
Uh, this is the load of the uh, computers. I would open the gate, but unfortunately it is actually holding this TV here that I'm going to take to my scrapper friend. So, George, if you see this, you're going to be getting a TV and a whole bunch of these old Dell Optiplexes, the ones I couldn't use. Some of these were the uh, 760s and the GX uh, 620s. I was a little disappointed that I couldn't get this old HP Vectra computer working. This one was just too far gone, so... That one's definitely going to him as well. But there's a total of about 15 computers in here. Now, this one I got at a garage sale that was totally stripped. I would have kept it. I like the case, but you can see the case was really beat up. And, unfortunately, it was missing the side. So, that was a heck of a lot of work to do. Mom and I are still going to go for our walk today. Um, I'll go ahead and film when I get back home. And I'll talk to you guys. All right, Tubers, side. time for a little bit of a rest after loading all those computers in there. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about scrapping because you guys have probably been wondering, hey, Matt, how come you don't do your own scrap metal recycling? Probably make some extra money. Well, for me, you know, on average, I might get 15, 20 computers for scrap every couple of months. If I was to do that myself, I'd have to break all the metals down. I'd have to be a smelter. I'd have to go ahead and remove all the gold from there, smelt that, you know, separate all the different metals in the computer. And I just, not only do I not have the expertise, but I don't actually have the equipment to do that. It would cost me more to recycle those computers than I would get out of it. Whereas the gentleman that I'm bringing this to has all that stuff. He has smelting equipment. He has all the specialized equipment that you need to separate the different types of metals and the plastics. And more importantly, he has all the contacts to be able to um, get rid of the materials that he can't deal with himself. So if you guys are like me and, you know, rebuild, refurbish computers and you have a lot of uh, metal and, and, you know, scrap metal to get rid of, It'll behoove you, see if you guys know that what that word means, you can look that one up. It would behoove you to know a scrap metal recycler slash dealer, somebody that can take that stuff off your hands. Now in my case, he doesn't he doesn't charge me because of course he gets you know money out of recycling it. And what he actually does is when I give him this stuff, he'll trade me usually like some hard drives, some monitors that he gets in that he thinks that you know I might be able to use. Granted, a lot of the times the, the, the stuff is older and it doesn't have that much value, but he's actually doing me a favor by taking these old computers off my hands because um, if he didn't do that, I would actually, actually have to pay to get these computers uh, recycled. I can call bulk pickup in our area where they would come around with a truck and they'd have that claw that picks up all the computers and all the appliances and puts them in the, the garbage and that's free. But that's really not the environmentally friendly way to do that because they don't recycle it. Literally they just take that stuff, they crush it and they put it in a landfill. So the best thing again to do if you're into the type of business I am where you get a lot of product in, especially a lot of product that you take parts out of like computers. Um, definitely try to find a good scrap metal guy because in the long run, it'll be well worth your while. Absolutely gorgeous day today. Mom and I are going to go for a walk now. Um, I've been really bad. I haven't really officially walked the last couple of days. I have gotten my exercise in. I have gotten about 15,000, 16,000 steps. But it hasn't actually been a full cardiovascular workout, which is okay. Sometimes your body needs that rest period. You know, two days, three days off once in a while is okay. But the thing is, you never want to give up. If you're changing your lifestyle, you need to make sure you keep up the exercising. I'm going to go ahead and walk. You know what? I'm, I'm butchering words today. Mom and I are going to go walk. And I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers. Helping dad, he's got to bleed the brakes on the uh, 46. Now, what did you do? You what'd you replace on here? The pads, calipers. Oh, okay. You did the calipers. So, while I'm waiting for us to uh, take our walk, I can help dad do this. <laughs> got the old school jack, got to pump it up. Watch the master 30 year certified master tech at work, yeah, right. ASE certified master tech. Long time. It is, but it still holds true, especially on the older cars. Yeah. He knows just about everything there is to know about these cars pre what? 1990? Yeah. Oh. Pre, pre 20, 24. Yeah, yeah, pre 2000. 
But I'm alright after that too though. This car is in this car is actually in really nice shape. This is on a what a 81? 82 Chevy chassis. 82 Chevy Chevy pick C10 pickup chassis and the body is the 46 Plymouth. And Dad did a really nice job here, too. He used to have the handles, but now we have the door poppers. He actually covered up the handles and did the body work himself. It, it could use a paint job, but I tell you, this car is actually in pretty good shape right, overall. It's dirty right now. Yeah, it is a little dirty. We're still having the pollen issues at the moment. All right, Tubers, he's ready for me to bleed the brakes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the vlog, and I'll talk to you guys on three the flip times. Side. Okay, one. Two, three, just bleeding the brakes here, pumping it, and then hold it to the floor. Okay, one, two, three, and you hold it. I'm actually using the steering wheel to hold it down because this brake is really hard. Okay, to the right or the left? The other way. Left. I was about to say. All right, so we got one brake bled. Now it's all the way the other way. Okay, three times. Okay, one, two, three, and hold. That is really stiff. Oh, it's going to the floor. All right, do it again. Okay, one, two, three hold to the floor is that it let me see feels feels good feels tight all right tubers that's it we bled the brakes on the 46 plymouth wasn't too hard at all is that fine again i'm sure it is okay i'm not pumping up that's pretty well you think? Yeah. You want to try it again? I got all the air out of it. Maybe it just needs to work itself in. These are power or no on this one? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. I mean, it feels good. It feels tight. It feels, yeah. It feels about right to me, anyway. Go down again. Hmm. All right. I want you just, uh, it's not pumping up, huh? Stay in the same spot all the time? Uh, no, it's coming up. I mean, there's a pedal. It's it's hard. I mean, there's definitely a brake pedal. Does it get harder as I'm growing? Hmm, a little, yeah. All right, do it again. Hold it down. This is weird. This 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 thing gave us prob problems the last time. Try it again. See what we can get done. Hold it down. Hold it down. Yep, holding it down. It's to the floor. Okay. You can actually hear my foot down. Yeah, it's bleeding. It's working. Mm, yeah, a little tighter. Turn your wheel over the other way again. Okay. <laughs> this is definitely a process, tubers. I don't know if you guys have ever bled brakes before, but it doesn't always go right the first time. Okay. Okay, to the floor. All right, I didn't feel it go down that time. Two, three. Okay, now it went down. Let me say. Uh, yep, a little tighter, a little tighter than it did before. Did that go down as far? No, it's definitely a little tighter than it was. Okay, gotta bleed it again. This is par for the course in classic cars. Just one of a thousand things you have to do on a regular basis. No, not holding it down yet. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was bad. Okay, it went down. Pump it. Okay, one, two, three. I'm holding it. Yep, went down. Okay. 
three. Holding it down. Yep. <laughs> Tell you, you could have a sore knee after this. Okay, holding it. <laughs> yeah. Higher up. Do a four. Okay, I'm holding it. Oh, yeah, definitely higher up. I can see now it's higher than the gas pedal. Oh, good. Yeah. Do a couple more times. All right, tubers, we're going to go ahead and finish bleeding these brakes, and I will talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, wow. Man, those were hard to bleed, but non-power brakes usually are. I have to give my leg a minute to rest. That was crazy. But Dad ordered something for us that was really interesting. Um, I've always wanted a little case to be able to hold my phone in when it's in my pocket, and he found these on Amazon. Um, I'm not sure what the brand is, but this will fit... Uh, a smartphone up to the size of the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. And you can see back here, you have a little key strap here. But more importantly than that, you have a little metal clasp, if you can see it right there, that can go on your belt. So I mean, this thing's really, really cool. And if I remember, I will try to give you guys the link to this. I know they weren't very expensive. I think they were maybe 5 or $6 a piece, but they're really well made. You can see that it's a Velcro. Very strong Velcro, actually, and it's a nice cushion pad inside, so this will definitely protect your cell phone um, from the bait, not even just basic drops, but let's say you were to drop it out of your pants and it was to fall on something like uh, cement or concrete. This would really, really protect it, so if I remember, I'll make sure I put a link in there. Mom and I are finally ready to go on our walk, so I'll talk to you guys when we get back. All right, tubers, we are done with our scrap run. We got rid of all of those com old computers. Wound up being 18 towers and one like 43 inch TV. And uh, my scrapper buddy, he, George, was really happy to get those things. So we're heading home. I'm gonna end the vlog here for today. Hope you guys are really enjoying these. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.